and uh, my name is Richard Plowman and I'm from Denmark. I have a studio called Tusi Halftone Studio A, a um, recording studio, live recording studio, uh, where I can do full production. So I have a 40 channel uh, in out uh, Pro Tools HDX system and uh, lots of uh, preamps and microphones and everything. So I can do a whole uh, whole band one time just to do album straight down, you know, with a little bit of overdubbing. I don't do a, I don't, I almost do no programming and stuff like that. It is uh, strictly live recordings, right. um, real instruments. Then I have something else which is uh, also a, a, a very famous artist from Denmark. Uh, they used to have a really good hit song, also again uh, in the 80s actually. And this is recorded more like a, more like a Simon and Garfunkel style of music. We didn't do any conventional drums on this. We had a big a bass drum. We were hitting like this, uh, uh, tambourines and shakers and all that stuff. But no, no um, ordinary drum. you can know that girl. girl of me. It's a vocalist recorded with an uh, M149 Neumann microphone, two microphones. And and 99% of this is recorded in my studio. Just mix it, the, the guitar player who produced it mixed it and so There's a um, five five uh, microphones on the acoustic guitar. Whoa. Wow, this is five. Yeah, five. <laughs> <laughs> This is a session picture. Session picture. That's a bass drum I used. This, we recorded most of it in the kitchen. We wanted a different sound. It's a the drum, the bass, the bass that's drum. A, that's the kick drum you saw that he was hitting like yeah. that. Yeah. It's a 26 inch okay. Gretsch from the 70s. Yeah. And then we tune it down, you know, and so it. So how do you mic that? That is mic. Uh, I think that is mic with a. With a I think it's mic with the M149 actually. A big large diaphragm microphone, you know, to get that big punch into it. How close? And further away. And it's recorded in the in the kitchen to get that mm, from the room, you know. Yeah. To get that live sound, that hard live sound actually. And, uh, I tried recording a drum like that way back. I couldn't get the sound. No, because you need the room. Yeah. Most of these recordings I do is, is about the room where you record it in. Because yeah. Normally with this style of music it's just a line guitar and it's just a clean guitar. But what I did on this album was I tried to uh, use different sounds on the guitar uh, on, for different roles, um, different uh, things that were playing on the songs and also from song to song. So, and I just do it subtle so it doesn't become too much. It still sounds like a clean picking guitar but it has some chorus on it or some face or some auto or something like that and of course uh, recorded most of it recorded through a fender fender uh, supersonic amp mm -hmm. you hear the rounds the rounding of the guitar sound Kenyan 
Don't know there's what men want men And the women knew they are lazy That is why my mother, she walks out She gave one of people a baby boy In my whole village they know I was My father the son I am tall, strong and built With my grandfather's eyes They told me They told me what I am They told me They told me who I am That's kind of fun because it was recorded there. It was a weird one. It's a it's a it's a Cuban it's a Cuban guy remember. called um, oh I can't remember his name right now. It's a guy from Cuba. Very very nice. But really great. Trumpet and saxophone. Or I think that there's there's trumpet and saxophone and the saxophone was some guy from Denmark. Okay, no trombone. Maybe there was some trombone in there. I think yeah, there was also trombone. I can't remember if there was a trombone in this track. Mm -hmm. Probably there was. I think that trombone, saxophone, and, and horn. they were actually recorded. They were actually recorded. The, that's the only thing that um, is from the original recording, actually, okay. and and some of the backing vocals. Uh, we we edited it out and, and made it make it work. Okay. So it normally work with a song like this, yeah. how would you how do you mix the horn? Um, do you decide what the what the horn should? I mean, where like the frequency it should be. Uh, depending on the song, whether the horn should be I mean, fat or it should be that. It's again, it's again what? something like I'm a naturalist, you know. Uh, I kind of um, and and I I don't think about it that way. I mean, okay. I don't decide whether to do one thing or another. I kind of listen to how it sits in the track, and okay. then I decide if the, if if it should be more, um, if you need more low end or more high end. Okay. It, it, it depends on how, it, how it's working in the track. I don't make a decision and force it to sound in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And when I record horns, normally I record them from a distance. Uh, I don't go close to the horns. I record them like, okay, uh, like I prefer to record them like three meters away. But that's meters. also because you must understand the way my studio sounds. Okay. I can if you have a if you have a if you have a room which has a bad color on everything or and it's not uh, big enough, then as soon as you start going away with the microphone you get a different sound mm -hmm. sound mm -hmm. from the room right mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you know that a wall acts like a filter yep. some some frequencies yep. come back and all yep. it doesn't yep. but in my room which has a nice warm and and and, and natural sound mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. makes it even sound better than mm -hmm. i like to move away mm -hmm. because then i get a more rounded and full full sound so for me it's about uh, it's about recording it the right way mm -hmm. Rather than sitting with it and EQing it um, in, in different ways, so I, I don't do that much EQing. But on this, I did a lot of EQing. I did a lot of editing to make it sound um, uh, do tight. You, do you group to EQ or you EQ you individual, group. individual? Yeah, I do also. Some, sometimes I do in individual uh, EQ, especially on this sometimes. one. Sometimes. On this one, I did a lot of tweaking. On and I, and I even yeah, yeah I, I, I mean. First of all, I did what I did was I edited it so it really sounded sharp because it mm -hmm. was not it was loosely played you know it was a little lazy uh, recording. Like tight, tight enough, really. A lot, a lot, and and, and 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 also kind of manipulate a little bit with it, taking some samples from somewhere else in, okay. in the song and tuning the one note up and down so they fit it there so it got a more okay. more um, a wider. Uh, Harmonies on the on the on the, on the thing, and um, then I did I I took I took uh, I used three band compressing on this three three band uh, multi band compression okay. on this, and then I also um, sent it through a, a, a flanger. So flanger. There's quite flanger. a lot of flanger, flanger on this. Okay. On the flanger, horn. yeah. Horn sounds almost like they have flanger on them okay. already, and this is a uh, this is a rough. This is a rough version of that uh, band I played for you earlier, where I wanted to play mm -hmm. what came off the console actually, this one here, to hear the difference.
That's straight off the console. No mixing or anything like that. Whoa. This is my raw drop sound. And I never understand why they didn't go for that. This is just a heavy low end and uh, Shift to the the original uh, the song the really final product the final product on iTunes. <laughs> oh, this is so good. They cut everything away. They cut everything. Just cut everything. Great. And when they came to my studio, I like to make that sound. You know. Mm -hmm. So they said to me, can you mix it? And I was like, no, no, I can't mix it, no, I can't mix it. I cannot mix your music, you know, I thought, I, would get, I got scared. And I shouldn't have, I should have, I should have stepped yeah, my foot yeah. and look at the difference. Yeah. And I'm telling you, this is a good example, this is a good example of how, because sometimes you say that uh, sound is not important, the important thing is writing a good song. Yeah. But when you have a good song, sound does yeah. become important. Yeah. And that would have been a hit. This didn't become a hit, like. Uh, but the other, they would have, if if not a hit, they would have got really good reviews on it. I think. Yeah. yeah. Because people would have loved that. Oh, really see how you thing. can destroy stuff with production. You can load too much in, make a smart intro, and pull down the drums or whatever. You know, tweak it too much, and you tweak the life out of it. Because that, what you hear that the 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 other stuff. There's no EQs on it. There's no tweaking. I have a on the drums. Ooh. I have a master compressor on the drums, okay. and everything is recorded straight into the console. Whoa. And I'm just putting a master compressor on it. Okay. I, I use I use a limiter mm -hmm. and a, and a multiband compressor mm -hmm. just to make Lovely. it right up there. Well, now we're done with that, and I um, and I want to tell you a little bit of them about my philosophy about recording, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we can see the tour afterwards. Because right. this is kind of a. I started out also sitting and tweaking stuff a lot and using a lot of plugins. Then I, what happened was that I bought the HDX system because I had a I had a Pro Tools um, Mix Plus system or something like that. Uh, no, I have an HD3 system. And then I was building a new studio and I thought uh, HDX is coming out. You know, I want to have that system. You know, I want to kind of invest in the future. So I already have this and I just went out and bought it and then when I got it it was a totally new system so what I didn't realize was there was no plug-in there was no plug-in for the system I was back with the basic uh, plug mm -hmm. so it made me rethink the way I worked you know and mm -hmm. I had to go out and go out in the recording room and make it sound right mm -hmm. without all the plugins on and it, I had a I had a like a, this much long plug-in you know, now I have this, I have like five plugins I go for and that's it. <laughs> and I make the sound uh, when I record it. And this recording and another, another recording I actually did make me realize the way it sounded in the 70s. Why is, uh, why is Stevie Wonder sounding so good, so fat? Why does it sound so, so right on the edge, you know? It's because, it's not because of the tape. It's not because of the old consoles or mm -hmm. the microphones or that mm -hmm. thing. It is mm -hmm. because they didn't tweak it. They didn't overload it. They didn't overproduce on it. They simply recorded it straight down to... The, sometimes they recorded, they had they had 16 or 24 tracks going and they went down to two tracks or one track when, in the old mono days. And, and, and they, might, they might bounce it uh, and add a little bit of a, um, a dubbing on top of it. Maybe a chorus, a very, very uh, the choir, you know, very, very... Um, very, very small one, you know, coming in on the right spots, a little bit of horn, and sometimes it was all live. So, so that's why it sounds so good. That's because they are not, they're not oh, tweaking the life out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of just became my uh, become my philosophy is that to uh, I want I there's also the way I'm working that a lot of clients take the stuff home and continue working on it. So I I'm, I want to make sure that when they come home 
and they open up my recordings track by track and just pull all the faders up it's right. it should sound great it should sound right okay. right and and it makes a difference actually so so it's nice with all these gadgets it's nice with all these things and tweaking and stuff like that but the process of getting good sound should be uh, in the in the recordings itself yeah. somehow and it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that it has to cost a lot just a little bit extra work you know mm -hmm. But then again, that's my uh, philosophy, you know. Of, uh, you can take Jamaican music, uh, reggae, for instance. They have, they didn't have very good uh, recording studios back then, and they didn't have a lot of uh, expensive uh, microphones yeah. and stuff like that. But they made work with what what they have, and that's and then they made that sound really, really good. So in order to 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 have a good Jamaican uh, keyboard sound, you need that cheap keyboard. You need that mm -hmm. Korg. M1, M1 yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a ridiculous keyboard. Yeah. It sounds awful, but if you do the you do the bubble on that, you know, it's just that's the sound. That's yeah. the sound. So so there's many ways of doing things, but they also kind of didn't tweak that much in the old days uh, on it because they just recorded it. But they they made they made why the drums sound so raggy, you know, it's because it was raggy drums. Mm -hmm. it just played with it so it sounded well. Um, let me show you the tour, right?